Why Sean Wade is in a perfect position to learn so much from Marcus Peters. Which player on offense and defense need to step up the most in order for the Ravens to be successful this season? Now, looking at it from a different perspective, which offense and defensive players will be high impact players for the Ravens five years from now? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Graven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL Questions from Subs, then you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all supporting the channel a little bit extra. Thank you for that, because, yes, it goes a very, 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 very uh, long way. So I appreciate y'all. Team Keep It Clean, we got some great questions, as we always do. So let's get into it. First question came from my guy, Steven. He said, hey, what up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are good. Oh, yeah, we're doing real good. Appreciate you, Steven. He said, I was watching Catching Phase with a Keep to Lead podcast on YouTube, and he had MP Juice Man on as a guest, and Tlaib told Peters he thinks Sean Wade was a big steal uh, that dog year he had playing on the outside in 2019. Uh, he said this past year was down because his eyes stay in the backfield trying to make a play and that his risks just weren't calculated. He said that MP is the perfect person to train his eyes to be disciplined and that he's going to make a lot of plays this year. Wondering what you think about this deep corner room started with Marlon Humphrey. Slept on, by the way. I don't think he's getting slept on that much anymore now. I, I, I wouldn't say that. Um, and the potential of Sean Wade. Uh, yeah, the, the, the potential is definitely there, man. And I, I do like that. I, did, I didn't watch, I have been meaning to watch that podcast. Somebody has sent it to me, and then I, I just never got a chance to watch it, though. Um, but, yeah, if, if he's one of those risk-taking type cornerbacks like that, then, uh, yeah, Marcus Peters would be the perfect guy to uh, train him. And just, I think the biggest thing with it is just film study. It's just really putting in that work, studying, 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 and disguising as well. Disguising what you're doing. Being able to mask what you're doing. Make the quarterback think one thing, and then just completely flipping the script. Some of the best to do that right now, Marcus Peters, but I call Marcus Peters the cornerback version of Ed Reed. And you know Ed Reed, he was the king of doing that, man. Oh, Ed Reed really spoiled us big time, man. But anyway, he said, I got a second question. <laughs> what do you think of the impact T. Martin and Keith Williams uh, are going to have, in your opinion? Because I hear some talking about they'll make wide receivers two times better with the way they both teach. But I'm thinking that that is so limited. Uh, I, I think the adjustments that they have and the potential that they have to make with making in-game adjustments and changing in-game situations can be deadly to opposing defenses. Or am I looking at it wrong? Oh, no, no. You're looking at it in a nice way, and, and hopefully that does end up being the case. But the, the in-game adjustments, I think it that just really depends on how much of a voice they have. And that's the exact, that's what we said from the day they got hired. The day that it was announced, the day we did that video, I said that I, I'm excited for it. They got nice resumes. But my thing is how much of a voice will these guys have? It's up to Greg Roman. It's up to John Harbaugh to really uh, either allow these guys to have a voice or just be like, um, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but uh, we got it. So it all depends on those two. The next question came from my guy, Frankie C. He said, do you think we aren't going to sign anyone else? Because the Ravens already got a lot of players on the team. And would that would make it harder for them to make the 53-man roster cut at the end of preseason. Let me know what you think. Always keep up the great work and thank you for all that you do. No, I, I, I do think the Ravens will continue. They, they will sign somebody else. I, I still think they're going to sign a veteran edge guy. I do not think it's going to be Justin Houston. I, it would be nice if it was. Uh, today is Friday, July 23rd. Uh, um, when, so if this video comes out and Justin Houston already gets signed somewhere, and if the Ravens do sign him, hey, cool. But if they don't, hey, cool. But I don't think it's going to be him. I think it's going to be somebody just under the radar guy. A guy that nobody's paying attention to. A guy that nobody's really looking for. And I think... I think they could even possibly still sign a safety too. So, and I know they got like a bunch of safeties right now, 
But I, I think they could sign a safety, a more sort of um, dynamic experience safety. Um, somebody who got a little bit of trade on the tires, but somebody who got a lot of experience in the game. Uh, so we'll see. But I, I do not think that the Ravens are done creating the roster right now. There's, there's no way. And then that's what training camp is for, too. I know it, it can make it harder to, uh, to – the more that you have, the more competition that you have, it can make it harder to make those decisions when you're assembling your roster. But better, that, better it to be tough decisions than easy decisions. Like, obviously, minus the quarterbacks here, even though the backup quarterback situation, there going to be something there. But – you don't want it to be like, oh, okay, well, that's going to be our uh, wide receiver right there. That's going to be our top two wide receivers um, after that. Mm, yeah, I, I, I don't know what it's going to be after that. I mean, yeah, uh, oh, that guy's okay. No, you want it to be tough. You want it to be like, oh, man, this is so hard. I don't know who we're going to have to keep, who we're going to cut. I, I just don't know because these guys are really bringing it. That's what you want. So the fact that Ravens, they, they, I mean, every team has it. They have 90 people on the roster. And the fact that all these guys, you can't keep everybody. You can only keep 53 or 55, whatever the rule is right now. But you can only keep a certain amount. So the, the better the competition you have in there, the better your team will be when that final product comes, when that final roster comes. Next question came from Caden B. He said, Ain't Graven, hope you and your family are great. Hey, we've, we've been doing really good, man. So I appreciate you asking that, man. I've only been watching for a few months now, but this is my first time asking a question. Oh, I appreciate you. So you, uh, I'm, I'm glad you became a part of Team Keep It Clean in the off season. So off season was just like, off season was laid back. It's pretty chill for the most part, but regular season, yeah, it gets really crazy on here. But anyway, he said, who do you think on offense and defense needs to step up the most for us to be the most successful next season? Oof, I like that question. Oh, that's a, that's a put, put it on the spot question. Who do I think needs to step up the most uh, on offense and defense for the Ravens to be successful? Um... If we are talking about, uh, well, no, that's that's a little different. Um, if we talking about just players, if we're not talking about coaches, because uh, I my my thing would be I, I would say John Harbaugh, and I don't say that as taking a shot at John Harbaugh. I, I say that because I feel like this Ravens team in the playoffs, even in the win last year. But in the playoffs, these past three years, they have been so unprepared, unprepared. They come out slow. They start off slow every single playoff game. And they've, what, how many have they lost? What, four? They've only won one and they lost four because they lost to the Chargers and they lost to the Titans. Then they uh, beat the Titans and lost to the Bills. Oh, maybe, okay, so they won in three. But anyway... Um, my, but in all them games, they started off slow every time, every single time. You can't do that. You, you, you cannot do that. Again, my concern, regular season, there's no concern. I'm not worried about them in a the regular season. My concern is how they do in the playoffs. But anyway, that would be who I feel really needs to step up would be John Harbaugh. And again, like I said, that's not a shot at John Harbaugh. It's not a shot at him. But anyway, um, now as far as players, whoo, players, um, hmm, I would say, uh, I would say Bradley Bozeman. I would say Bradley Bozeman. The reason I say him is because a lot is riding on him. Because he, him taking over as the starting center, he hasn't played the position in a couple years, but it is his natural spot, so it should be a, a smooth transition. But we, with the uh, bad snaps last year, it was a lot of them. Well, and, and I think not even that it was so much of them, but they were so significant because they changed games like that, like just like that, quick. Um, so we would definitely need him to just make it a smooth process. Him handing the ball off to Lamar, him snapping the ball to Lamar, it got to be a smooth process. So that would be one on defense. Um, I would say Patrick Queen. And the reason that I would say Patrick Queen, uh, and also Chuck Clark too. 
Well, I for Patrick Queen, I say him, and he didn't have a bad season last year. There were some times where he looked a little bit lost, but again, you got to remember last off season, it wasn't your typical off season, uh, and and this could be and this could have an have had an impact, and it did have an impact on everybody. Um, but I would say Patrick Queen. Um, but again, he was a rookie last year, and so yeah, so he got not that he got an excuse, but he got an excuse. Uh, but with Chuck Clark, um, with Chuck Clark, with him, um, he was somebody that he would always be right there when the ball was coming his way, going to the tight end that he was covering. He would always be right there, but the tight end would be usually be the one to end up making the play. Um, so. He, I, I just feel like he would just need to take it up just a, 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 another, another slight notch. He didn't play bad last year, but I just feel like he could take it up a notch, especially when covering them tight ends and stuff, and um, just making, a, making plays on the ball. Because, he, again, he was super close so many times, but just the tight end would be the one to make the play. So, oh, this was a really tough question. Next question came from our guy Manuel. He's a shout out from Mexico. He said, after seeing a video and reading the tweet that PFF put out, I don't know who let that slip through, but it made me realize they hate on Lamar Jackson, all unanimous MVP for the Ravens, and that is dumb. Why is it dumb? Because they can't stand that they were wrong in the beginning about him, and he has proven them wrong. No other MVP has re received the amount of hate like he has, well, except Brady, because he keeps winning the big one, uh, just for no reason. Even if Lamar wins the Super Bowl, I bet they'll say it's because of EDC's work and not his own. But if it is any other team uh, and any other quarterback, they'll praise them and forget it's a team sport. Everyone from top to bottom of the organization won that Super Bowl, not just one person. Stay safe and tell Team Keep It Clean to check in on physical and mental health because we all we got, as the Ravens say before the game. All right, yeah, and um, I mean, that's that's how it's going to be with Lamar, and it's, it's unfortunate, but... It, it, it is exactly what it is, and that's what we're just going to keep on saying it is what it is. And the next question also came from my guy, Manuel. He said, here are some plays that I was thinking while we are all waiting for football. Number one, the hurt. Our star offensive lineman, uh, Lamar in the center, Pancake Pat behind him, and Gusto with Boyle as the right tight end, and M Andrews and Mason on the left. How more heavy we can get to get a run uh, on the ball through a defense with the possibility of giving it to Gus, Ricardo, or even Lamar after faking it that he gives him the ball or passes it to Mandrews, Boyle, Mason, uh, giving it to each in the jet sweep. Okay, so that's one of his plays that he drew up, and that is definitely a heavy, 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 heavy package. Number two, speed kills. Uh, our star offensive line, Lamar in the center, J.K. behind him, Bateman left wide out, Hollywood at the, on the left slot, Mandrews on the right lineup with the offensive line, and Duvernay on the right wide out. You can give it to J.K. to run fast, inside or outside, or faking it so Lamar runs if there's a lane open, or you can throw it quickly to Hollywood in the post route, or to du Duvernay on the go route, or Bateman outside the numbers. Or, if you want, you can throw it to Mandrews so he can embarrass the linebacker. <laughs> okay, I like that one too. And number three, who has it? This lineup includes our star offensive line, Lamar under center, J.K. behind him with Gusto and Justice Hill in a wishbone formation with Patrick Ricard as a tight end. He said, good luck guessing who has the ball then. And let me know your thoughts and stay safe and tell Carter be great in life. And let's get that ring. Oh, you uh, you you been in the lab with this one, man. You see, you definitely been uh, working on some stuff. You What you should do, try these out in Madden. Use them in Madden. And you, you're going to have people quitting on you left and right. Um, but, yeah, no, on a serious note, it is important that um, the offense this year, they, uh, again, you don't got to get too, not that you don't have to get too creative. You don't have to get too pretty. You don't got to get cute. But use your weapons. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest takeaway that I got from all of your, the plays that you got in your playbook. Use the weapons. They're there for a reason. Let's get it done. Next question came from my boy Anthony L. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well with you and the fam, especially with the storms that's been going on. Hope all is good. But anyway, not really a question, but when it comes to the Lamar critics, I think of this quote Nas mentioned years ago. People fear what they don't understand, hate what they can't conquer, and maybe that's a theory of man. Well, yeah, especially that part, they fear what they don't understand, and that is something with Lamar Jackson. A lot of people, he, again, he's very different. And some people don't get his different, and they don't want to accept his different. So they're like, you know what? We're going to decline his different, and we're not going to like his different. Next question came from my guy, Cody P. He said, hey, Graven, thanks for all the content. You're my most trusted news source and analyst for all Baltimore Ravens. I appreciate that, Cody. Thank you, man. 
He said, I was wondering which current offensive and defensive players you think are most likely to be high impact players still on the Ravens roster. Ooh, five years from now. The only one I feel certain of is Lamar Jackson. Ooh, that is a, uh, ooh, ooh, that's a question right there. Ooh, nobody ever asked a question like that before. Um, wow, that is a good one. Um, on offense, well, yeah, I feel like Lamar is just such an easy answer. But um, past Lamar, besides Lamar, so I'll, I'll exclude him from this. Uh, I would say, I say J.K. Dobbins. Now we know the um the life of a running back it can be short. Um, so it all depends on the preservation of his body. Um, but I would I would say J.K. Dobbins. He is certainly well on his way to just continuing that. And one thing that goes in J.K. Dobbins' favor is that. He has Gus Edwards with him for the next three years. So he has him with him for the next three years. So that'll help both of them with the wear and the tear. Um, but on defense, I feel like Marlon Humphrey's such a, uh, that that's, that's feels like an easy one. Um, mm. Oh, maybe it will be Marlon Humphrey, though. Maybe that, that, that would be the one. <laughs> Marlon Humphrey, uh, he can get back to uh, being an outside corner and he can continue to up his game because uh, his game is already a very, at a very high level. But if he gets to play in his natural position as an outside corner, I feel like like not in no cocky way or nothing like that. But I feel like him being an outside corner, that can make the game easier for him because he's been playing on the inside, of course, due to Tay Tay getting hurt. But if he goes back to the outside, I feel like that would make the game easier for him. So, because he, he wouldn't be guarding these uh, these shorter, shifty uh, wide receivers and whatnot. And, I mean, there's some outside corners who are, I mean, outside receivers who are there like a Tyreek Hill. But he would be at his natural position, and he would have the help from the sideline, too. So, uh, hey, I, that's who I think he would be. I would say Marlon Humphrey. The last question on this episode, a question from subscribers, came from my guy Greg from b -more. He said, hey, Graven, even without uh, Orlando Brown Jr., I believe this offensive line overall is better than last season because of Zeitler at right guard and Bozeman at center. Plus, Villanueva is still a good right tackle option. And the left guard spot, I love the competition, and I think we'll be fine there. So, do you think this is the best O-line currently Lamar has had with the Ravens? Assuming Ronnie Stanley is good to go soon. Uh, I know, um, still 2019, that, that was something serious, man. Uh, and they, they did get a little bit overrated, but that's because of Lamar. So this offense, every every offensive line that Lamar Jackson has, they will look even better than they are because of what he's able to do. Um, but this one, would could this be the best offensive line that Lamar Jackson ever had? Oh, I, I can't say that. No, I, I, I can't say that. Um, and I know we haven't seen them play yet, of course, but... I can't say that because this is going to be Stanley coming off of an injury. Alejandro Villanueva, we'll see. And older Kevin Zeitler, Bradley Bozeman at center now, we'll see. And an unknown at left guard. I, I, I can't say it right now. No, I, I can't say it. Uh, but anyway, he said, um, by the way, just wanted to say, I know you call the Ravens the Florida Ravens sometimes, and I love it. Even here and be more LOL. Not just because with all the people from Florida on the team, but two legendary Ravens played for Miami and Florida. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. So it's kind of true. I be trying to tell people, but they ain't want to listen to me. Some people even get mad. Why do you call them Florida Ravens? I don't like that. But anyway, uh, that's basically all I wanted to say. Hope you and yours are good. Uh, and appreciate you doing this. Um, and everybody else, have a fantastic day. Shout out to Graven.